to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Welcome, New Life family. This is Chris Williams sitting in for Steve Arterburn in studio with me, Dr. John Townsend. Hi, Chris. Hey, good to have you. you And Dr. Jill Hubbard. Hi, Chris. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you guys. Hi, John. Hi, Jill. (laughs) We've been together for an hour, so we're saying hi. (laughs) But we're saying hi because you're a listening family, and we'll say hi to you, too. Absolutely. And we're excited to get to your calls. We're also excited about, John, your new book. We are, too. People fuel. Fill your tank for life, love, and leadership. Okay, ah. so so what? Give us some help because so many of us find ourselves in situations where mm. we get anxious around people, or we feel like people drain us. Yeah, right. Or you're an introvert. You or know, you're I an don't introvert. need a lot of people. Right, right. And 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 all those are issues. And in, in, and it kind of comes down to, you know, God made us relational, but we don't like it. <laughs> 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 we would rather be on our own or giving to others. Mm-hmm. But you talk about, hey, you've got needs, too, for comfort and affirmation and wisdom and validation of your experience. We go, no, I, I don't want to be high need. I don't want to be the black hole of need. problem is the Bible says you do not have because you do not ask, wow. and blessed yeah. are the hungry and thirsty. So the book is about the science of new, of neuroscience and how it tells us that the Bible had it right the first time. Mm-hmm. How can you be around people and take in what they have without shame or guilt so you feel energy and positivity and resilience with the right people? And how do you give the same things to the right people? So it's kind of like God's model of health and healing. Yeah, and and we have this weird relationship with need. We we hate right? need. We do. We, uh, yeah. Yes. We, right. Most like, people try to reject their needs. Or, right? or, or like this. How are you doing? Um, I'm fine. How are you doing? Well, yeah. <laughs> excuse me. Is there an echo in here? Yeah. <laughs> well, and I find, especially in working with the world of addiction, mm. that when we try to exclusively meet our own needs, that just becomes, unfortunately, the right ingredients mm. for really destructive addictions. I to have show a Bible up. verse on that. When Jesus mm. said, when you clean up a house and you don't put thing, good things in it, it says, we throw out a demon, mm-hmm. seven more come back in. Yes. Nature abhors a vacuum. And if you're not, if you don't have some nurturing relationships that you can open up mm-hmm. to and let them love you and be really vulnerable with, if you're not vulnerable, seven bad things are going to come in, which causes the addiction. Yes. Absolutely. The isolation causes ah, the addiction. Sounds horrible. Yeah. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah. Well, it's it, awful, awful. And you talk about nutrients, you talk about soil, and what good soil does, it's it's, it's vulnerable to nutrients. There you go. Mm. That's and, the key. And so our vulnerability, our needs that lead us to our vulnerability, that lead us to connection. Can and, we, and, and. Here's what everybody, because I work, most of my time is work, working with leaders and mm-hmm. you know, CEOs and pastors and stuff. They'll say, I don't want to be the need person. I'll say, go to somebody and just say, can I just vent about the day? And they'll come back to me and go, the person said, you never asked me for anything. You're always uh-huh. caring about me. Yeah. Thank you. I feel honored uh-huh. that you let me in your life. It's a good thing. People it's feel wonderful. It's a gift. Yes. People mm-hmm. like it. That's excellent. So if relationship is a struggle in your life, like it is, I think, for me and mm-hmm. maybe everyone well, else. being intimate is a struggle yeah. for most intimate. people, right? Yes. Emotionally intimate. Yeah. That's part of being vulnerable. And if it's something that is confusing for you or just something you want to get better at, Please check out People Fuel. A lot of people are doing it. It's number one on a couple it's different. It's an Amazon lists. bestseller. Excellent. And so, People Fuel is the name of the book. John Townsend, Dr. John Townsend, is the name of the author. He's going to be in studio with Dr. Jill Hubbard, myself. We will um, be going to your call shortly. And again, um, give us a call one eight hundred two two nine three thousand. One other thing that I want to mention is coming up tomorrow in Sacramento, Every Man's Battle. If you need it, pick up the phone right now, give it a call, get there, and get a new future going for you. And uh, again, we're excited to be with you, and we will be right back after this.
My wife asked me for the first time in 2011 if I would consider myself a sex addict, so I signed up. You know, I'd read the Every Man's Battle book, and it was a great book, but the workshop, it was the experience that really was key for me. If, if they go to EMB, they're going to be in good hands. You know, this is a safe place. They're going to be surrounded by men that simply walk the talk. The weekend leaders that they will go through this workshop with, they'll help them to get to the root of their issues. You know, I've been through a number of well-preached sermons, listened to and read countless books, uh, been to a number of seminars. But EMB for me was, it was a game changer. It truly saved my life. Being in this community, being in this workshop, being around these men will change them if they'll let them. You're going to encounter men that will meet you where you're at, and you will instantly walk into a safe place where they're welcome. If you're struggling, call us. We don't want you to go on struggling. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. Chris Williams in for Steve Arterburn, and we got Dr. Jill Hubbard and Dr. John Townsend in studio. And so let's go right to the calls. Let's go to Louisa in Washington, D.C., listening on WAVA. Louisa, how can we help you? Hi, good afternoon. Um, my question is, how do I take care of myself um, emotionally and psychologically when I'm about to go through a really rough divorce? I know that when life gets overwhelming for me, I have a tendency to just, you know, kind of like withdraw and mm-hmm. everything is hard for me, even like taking a shower is, is overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So how do I care for myself through this process? That's that's a great question. Divorce mm-hmm. is a major, major, major life event that is, uh, calling it disruptive is probably an understatement. And so, mm-hmm. so Jill, what do you think? Well, How- I'll, I'll tell you what I did mm-hmm. when I was going through the process, um, Louisa. Um, I went to three of my closest friends, and I said, I need some support. Would you be willing to meet with me every week? and hold me up during there this process. There you go. Wow. So I brought three wow. people together Write that, down, Louisa. that That's were good. friends, but they weren't necessarily okay. the best of friends. And now the four of us, mm-hmm. eventually, as I got through it, then we started to talk about other people besides me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they are my three closest friends to this day. And it's just a bond that, um, you know, is so necessary in mm-hmm. life. But it really helped me because I needed people who would just take the time to listen. And so we created the time so I didn't feel like I was bothering them all the time. It's like, okay, this is when we're going to meet. And it was awesome. Yeah, I I think that's just the most coolest device I can think of. I I, I always go to kind of three places. And the first one was Jill's support, Louisa. But the second one, the research talks about, about going through hard times, is structure. And structure means like a... There's a dependable set of events going on in life. I mean, you got to take a shower, you got to have your quiet time, you got to go to the gym, you got to go to work. And structure will decrease the anxiety and feelings of overwhelm because it gives you a sense of control. So, just a decent structure where you're not like adrenaline flushing through all of the whole day. And the third thing is other activities that mm-hmm. you like. Like, don't give up hobbies and don't give up fun times and great church experiences and all that because our, uh, so we're all, we all tend to kind of gnaw on the problem. It's a divorce. It's over. Mm-hmm. It's awful mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And we got to do that. Mm. But you've got to compartmentalize that a bit and go, I've worried about that enough today. I'm going to go take photos or do whatever. And when you can create life activities outside of that, it normalizes it. Those are three things that work for us. Okay, thank you. Uh, and and I, I, let me just also add, I think there are also, you know, you have friends that maybe are not going through it, mm-hmm. but then also to go, a lot of churches have like a divorce care, oh, yes. divorce recovery. Yeah. Yeah, so for a period of time, go to that with yep. other people, because one of the things when you're going through it, you need places to talk Yep. more than ever. So mm-hmm. that'll help give you Hope that. that helps. And, and one th- yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah, okay, Louisa. no problem. Thank you for calling in, Louisa. There, y- you know, is as hard as divorce is, mm-hmm. as much as we don't want it, it's really common, and yet it's so hard to navigate. What do we do mm-hmm. when we 
when we go through these experiences right, that we don't have your, a playbook your for. Your world upside down. Absolutely. Yep. Right? So, Louisa, thank you so much for calling in. We're going to send you people fuel, and that's going to really give you a good framework for what kind of people that you need to walk through this season of your life. Yeah, there's a chapter on the comrades, your life team, mm-hmm. that Jill talked about, and yep. it'll give you the eight characteristics of people to pick that can fill your life team. There's, we've got eight things of the, the right kind of people vulnerability, uh, the, uh, availability, mm-hmm. uh, truthfulness, and grace, yeah. blah, 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 and it'll, it'll help. Excellent. Again, Louisa, thank you so much for calling in. Um, if you do have a struggle in your life that you can't figure out, that you need professional help for, let us help you. Mm-hmm. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We are connected with literally a national network of trained counselors and professionals. And so if this is something that you're struggling with, again, we are here to help you and get you connected. And as a part of that, we're going to go and we're going to take another phone call. We're going to go to June in Branson, Missouri. June, are you there? Yes, I am. June, how can we help you today? Um, I'm going to try to be real brief. Um, I am looking for some deeper level resources. Um, I We have had a sexual addiction attack our marriage. It reared its oh, uh, head almost two years ago. Mm. Um, we've, we've been through support groups. Um, mainly individual counseling. Now, is the sexual addiction right. your, your own or yeah. your husband's? My husband's. Okay. Um, we, we've known each other for over 20 years, married for 18, and um, let's see, we've got adult uh, children and um, several grandchildren. This is not our either of us is first marriage. Mm. So, um, have read boundaries, um, mm-hmm. DNA for relationships, focus on the family, a whole week marriage intensive. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, let's see. And, and so you've done all that, and where are things at now? Um, we, we had tried couples counseling, and... Um, then, oh, great. I'm traveling, and now I've got a police officer that's just pulled up behind oh, me. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> well, let's, okay, let's put so him on the air. Just don't do that. Public counseling twice. The second time um, was just within two months ago. After three months, the counselor um, basically asked my husband to step out for a little bit, talk to me, and to make a long story short, she said, I believe you're dealing with a covert narcissist oh. and uh, we cannot continue couples at the moment you need to go back to individual counsel um, hmm. just looking for deeper resources to work on myself hmm. and I'm 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 so sorry that I I'm not going to be able to continue this. Now, here's the deal. Um, We're going to talk about it while you're talking to the policeman and you get back on the program and get the oh. recording so you can hear it later. Okay. We'll, we'll help you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, John, what do you think? Hmm. Well, we needed more information, um, but I didn't really want to go to the what could she do yet because I think if the husband, even if he is a covert narcissist, um, he is treatable. I've seen it treated, and mm-hmm. I've seen it treated well, and you never give up on that because people mm-hmm. do that and say, well, I'll always be that way. I have That is just not true with the right setting. So I would want to tell her – um, find, go to back to your marriage person and say, who's the best therapist to deal with covert narcissism mm-hmm. and have him come in once, twice a week, probably take a year or so mm-hmm. to get that broken yeah. through. I'd want to go to the core. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think in these situations is that what we want to identify is the behavior continuing. Yeah. And so we got to get down to if, if you're struggling with sexual addiction in your marriage, we've got to get accountability Mm-hmm. But more importantly than that, or in addition to that, we've got to get an actual recovery process in go. place. Mm-hmm. Every man's battle presents Does this that. amazing yeah. picture of like really understanding it is the deeper resource, mm-hmm. but sustained victory or 12-step groups, ongoing process, because this is, this is not something that goes away quickly or slowly. No. Or I mean quickly or, or in a short period of time. It takes time. 
And the one other thing I want to mention about addiction, but especially sexual addiction, is that that because it centers around the consumption of an experience, I'm consuming another mm. person, I'm not mm. giving anything, right. it creates a narcissistic process. Mm-hmm. And, and so mm-hmm. once we get into treatment, if a person finds health and healing and they w- work out some of their own wounds mm-hmm. and get sobriety, you start seeing that narcissism just melt away. Right. You start to see that they aren't as far down the continuum there as they looked like. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so is there a willingness on the husband's part is something that she needs to really know. Is he willing? And a lot of times someone who's more narcissistic, it's only when the bottom falls out, right? Right. Their world falls apart that they're willing to get the help. And I would say, um, you know, a marriage in the balance might be enough. Exactly. So the boundaries are, here's what she has to do working out with her therapist, what the boundaries are that say, you're going to lose this, 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 this right. if yeah. you're not yeah. seeing the shrink, because otherwise mm-hmm. it's like got a heart condition. I'm going to see a doctor. So I don't. You got to kind of figure out what does he value in you? Is it the history? Is it the warm? Maybe you're a warm person. Maybe you have lots of structure and mm-hmm. you know answers, and he needs that. Maybe you're kind or whatever. But you got to say. I'm not going to be around much if you don't get the help. You're killing me here. So I'll be out four nights a week with my godly girlfriends doing something. And the narcissist goes, wait a minute. I, it was nice for her to be here. And after a couple of weeks, they they don't like to be alone because they don't like themselves, no, really. No. Mm-hmm. So there's where the boundaries come in and leveraging get get to the right person. Okay, uh, so so kind of to sum up, every man's battle. Yes, absolutely, guy, right? absolutely. Okay, ongoing individual therapy. Yes. And what do you guys think, though, about coming together once a month in a marital session? Helpful. Yes. I, very, I think that very would to helpful. touch base helpful. and, you know, I think that And get some reality with somebody watching it so that right, they just can't right. game Instead the system. Right, instead of it's just a year of them kind of being on no, their own and waiting. On. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, and again, for a person like this, he does need to be in some sort of daily, I know it sounds mm-hmm. harsh, but it really is true. Oh, absolutely. Daily active recovery process. Right. So then that would include groups. It would be include groups. Twelve, it would include sponsors, twelve sponsors, recovery sponsors. Right, yeah. That phone whole calls. Program. There's the a lot of things, but yeah. a good treatment plan. And and someone therapeutically that specializes in sexual addiction, mm-hmm. that really knows and understands what this is. And I think for go ahead, John. You I was just say, thinking about my own a rant about this when people say well we tried this and i'll go oh you tried therapy what does that mean well we went once yeah <laughs> yeah or yeah. we went uh, no twice. you you drove there <laughs> uh-huh. i mean Five you don't times. try it you got to mm-hmm. spend a lot of time and onks doing it mm-hmm. and if it's the right setting it works yeah, exactly june we're actually going to send her um a copy of dr sherry keffer's book oh, intimate good. deception great book uh-huh. That's and great. that book intimate deception it provides such a well-rounded mm-hmm. and thorough explanation mm-hmm. of what is going on here it brings clarity to this incredibly painful chaos so mm-hmm. um again if, if that is something that you are experiencing in your marriage if you have experienced betrayal Pain and trauma, intimate Mm -hmm. deception is a great, great resource for you there. So with that, um, let's go to Anna in Frederick, Maryland, listening on WAVA. Anna, are you there? Yes, I am. How can we help you today? Hello. Hello. Hi, Anna. How can Uh, we help you today? Um, My question is a little complicated. I've been with my husband for six years. And uh, we have three, well, four kids, uh, but three are under four. I have twins that are almost two. And uh, when my husband is at work, I'm a stay-at-home mom. But when he's at work, I think of him with love, like I love him so much. But when he's around me, I feel, like, disgusted of him. Like, I don't mm. feel love for him. Wow. Like, if he tries to kill, kiss me, I'll be like, I don't want to. Oh, wow. And if... He tries to have sex with me even worse. I feel mm. like, yuck. Yeah. Hmm. So it's, and I want to love him. Yeah. I just don't. I don't know. And that sounds really confusing for you because when yeah. he's away, you have it sounds like you have a longing for him, but when he's close, there's something that's inside of you that reacts to him that doesn't want to be around him. Right. Like you like the idea yeah. of love, the idea of having a husband, and, and perhaps even have an ideal picture of that. Mm-hmm. And then when he comes home, reality breaks through, and you don't so much like reality. And when he's around me, I just don't. 
Mm. How long have you felt this way? Like, you know, to notice, he's like, um, I feel like you don't love me anymore. Yeah. And it's been happening for, I would say, like four months, maybe. Over four months. Did anything happen around that time that was a loss or a stress for you? Um, Well, we have twins. They are stressed. I stay at home with them, so sometimes I do more of the work, you know? Mm-hmm. What, are the twins four months old? No, no, they're almost two. But did anything happen? Boys did anything? I mean, you work. were. It's just, I want you to pay attention to this. You said four months. That means your brain is marking yeah. a, a mm-hmm. time or an event mm-hmm. or something. We're gonna go to a break, but think about what could have happened that was hard or stressful or a loss for you around that time, and we're gonna help you. Again, th- we are okay. in studio with. Uh, Dr. John Townsend, Dr. Jill Hubbard. We're going to keep going back to calls, but I want to remind people about finding freedom. It is working through your pain to find greater emotional and relational freedom in your life. September 20th in Dallas. We will be right back. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. (laughs) Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back to New Life Live. This is Chris Williams in for Steve Arterburn. We have Anna on the phone calling in. And Anna, you have a very, very um, big load that you're carrying at home. Would that be correct? Yes. Just a quick question, Chris. Anna, the, you said the twins are two and they're boys. What are the other children? Um, one is 15 and the other one is almost four and it's a girl. Oh, a four-year-old and then a 15-year-old boy? Yes. No, okay. girl. Girl. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay, two girls and two boys at all different stages. Yeah. That is a heavy yes. load. Yes. Anna, do you wake up tired? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. The, yeah. Cause I'm, I'm thinking 15 and two. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's some similarities there, <laughs> right? Yeah. In the ages, yeah. you know. Yes. 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 <laughs> and Sometimes how? The 15 year old will be a lot of work more than. Exactly. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Uh, my question is how much of your day do you feel a sense of being overwhelmed? Uh,. Most of the day. Yeah. Mm. I would say, oh, mm. the only time I'm not overwhelmed is when they go to sleep. 
Mm. And at that time, I'm like stuck on my phone. I don't want to know anything about anyone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So once they go to sleep and then you just want to check out, check out from the world. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's Absolutely. a lot of testosterone, two little boys. Yeah. And, and they're having, very active. I don't, I don't have twins. I can only imagine yeah, twins, but I do me. have two boys, mm-hmm. and they are non-stop yeah. energy and non-stop attention. Like, all my life, I was always around women. I was oh. never around boys mm. or guys. Yeah. So this is, like, new for me. Yeah. And, and what's it like for you to be the mom of boys? I feel like it's a lot of responsibility hmm. and a lot of stress because yeah. they are very active and they're not, they're always fighting mm. it's a lot. Yeah. Me. Yeah. It takes a lot out of you. I want to do a good job. I want them to be a great man. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so I feel yeah. like it's a lot of pressure for me. Yeah. So let's kind of walk through in your mind, you, you, your husband, you miss him and you love him when you want to, you know, you'll be close to him when he's away. But when he comes home, then there's yes. the rejection feeling. Do Do you have a mm, a picture a picture in your mind of what you really would like for him to be like and say and do when he walks in the door that doesn't happen? <laughs> I guess I will. I will want him to be like. Uh, Go away, honey. I got this. You know. Mm. Yes, we yeah. were talking about yes, that. Yes, we the, were. We were talking about it <laughs> yeah. at the break. Go yeah. away, honey. I got this. Go take a bubble bath or whatever. Yeah, I got go these. For a walk. I got these four <laughs> beings here, and they're all mine. And you go away for an hour. That's what you would feel. That would feel good to you. But uh, the same time, I feel guilty because I know he's at work. Ah, forget that. Forget that. No, no, no. Don't, don't. Okay, we're yeah. going to toss guilt, guilt. Get the guilt monster out of here for yeah. a second. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal. We were kind of like thinking about you because we had some time in the break. And then you add the boy thing to what you just said. So you've got these boy, needy boys who are just boys. We raise boys. They and then, are and, needy. And, then yeah. and then you got this nice husband who's at work and you love. And he comes home. Guess what? He's a needy boy. He wants to have sex with you. He wants you to fix dinner. He wants you to listen to his or, day. Or he's tired or from he's his tired working. Of, so right, another, with adults. You got another needy boy, except he's like a grown man, and your tank is so empty. So your your brain is just going tilt. I I can't do this. The rejection feelings aren't because you're a bad person. You're no. just oh, you're just you're you're in the red. You're in the red. You don't have any gas in your tank. So. Well, and let me add, it's not because you don't like your husband And either. it's not because you don't yeah. like yeah. your husband. What would you think about a conversation with him where you said, I really want to be a great husband, wife to you, and I'm so sorry you don't feel loved anymore, and I think it's because I'm so overwhelmed. We have two solutions, and one of them is a conversation with him and say, can you say, honey, I got this, and just to give me some time away from all that. An and hour. Th- an hour, and then I would be so want to be close to you. But also, we want you to have better boundaries and support during your day as a mom, too, because he can't take it all either. you got four. And so I don't know if that means more, more rules with the kids, because if the boys are fighting all the time, that's not good for you or them. But also maybe mom's days or mom's groups or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. want to get a better day for you so your tank's fuller, but also for him to show up. We think that's kind of a little prescription that might help you. Yes. You, it makes sense. Do you think he'd be open to hearing that? Yes, yes, he will. He's, he's, he's a great guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm you're very lucky alone. to have him. Like right, and you don't want to be resentful and mm-hmm. think that he's not a good guy. Right. Right? And this is the time in couples' yeah. lives when they have young children where their worlds are the most different, I mm. think, than they ever are. Because yeah. your world yeah. as a stay-at-home mom is consumed true, true. with kids and child-rearing. And he's off with adults doing his thing. And, and work actually is a break. From kids, it's a different yeah. kind of mental energy and tiredness. It's not the same as running around with kids all day. Well, and when we carry these problems in ourselves, 
as spouses, we think the other person is the problem. What we don't realize is we're both on the same team, right? Go. Facing the same problem, right? And, and the problem is that this is together. a season of life that mm -hmm. can be overwhelming and really stressful. And how do we come on the same team together to That's de stress, the conversation. to de stress a little bit, and to help each other out, bring support, and maybe you, you had mentioned bringing structure. I think structure would be Boundaries good. Boundaries with Kids. It's a good book. Oh, that's a good one. Excellent. Look, well, we'll be it. right back after this. God pulled me out of the gutter of my life that I was living in. I have done a lot of work over the last 40 years. This is the first time I've ever felt love. I've had such a wonderful weekend here, and for the first time in a long time, I've felt at home. And the Lord has set me free from my mother's story about me not being good enough. The New Life Finding Freedom Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, September 20th to the 22nd. We're going to talk about forgiveness and codependency. We're going to understand that family of origin, the unhealthy reactions to it. We're going to talk about the cycle of shame and surrender and developing the plan that moves us forward. There'll be eight teaching sessions and six small group sessions. To register or to learn more about the Finding Freedom Workshop, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. I am living a new life and I believe that I have the resources and tools to continue that. Last year after every man's battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Hey, hey, we're back to <laughs> New Life Live. This is Chris Williams sitting in the studio for Steve Arterburn. Oh, we do have fun on our break. We Sorry, do. Chris. We do. And no, that's okay, because the laughter is just music <laughs> to my soul. So in studio right now, we have... Larry Sonnenberg, the guy that really keeps all of these things together and these things going. So, Larry, give us an update. Okay. Well, thanks, Chris. Um, New Life, uh, the, the thing we depend upon more than anything, and we haven't for the last couple months because of this matching campaign we had, is Club New Life. And Club New Life is our monthly giving program. And we seek to find folks who would be willing to give $30 a month or more uh, ongoing throughout the year and it is what makes the difference last year we made a we had a big campaign for Club New Life and in that campaign we were able to increase the monthly giving significantly uh, like thirty thousand dollars a month and so it's important for us to try to continue that campaign your thirty dollars matched with hundreds of others makes a big difference so we're coming and appealing to you to Join Club New Life. And I want to tell you what the thank you gift is when you give. If, you, if you'll join Club New Life, we'll send you what we call the best of the best. And we might have to add a ninth one since John's rewritten or written another book. But here's the eight books. <laughs> uh, healing is a choice. Changes that heal. Okay, healing is a choice is Steve Arterburn. He changes that heal, Henry Cloud. Boundaries, John Townsend, Henry Cloud. Forgiving what you never forget, Dave Stoop. How We Love, Mylon and Kay, Secrets Women Keep, Dr. Jill Hubbard, Every Man's Battle, Steve and Fred Stoker, and Intimate Deception, Sherry Keffer. Those books, if you um, signed up or if you went online and bought them at retail value, would be $129.
And I would even say that's a bargain. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, if if you'll if you'll sign up today, Chris, you'll get them free. <laughs> <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, great. I can't help it sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, it makes a difference. And the, you know, let me read you one little thing that somebody wrote us. Listening to Steve, Sherry, Dave, and all the other hosts gave me a different perspective of individuals that I deal with in my family. Anger, depression, borderline personality disorders, dysfunction, substance abuse. Does that sound like anybody else's Mm -hmm. family? Wow. Listening to New Life helped to approach all individuals with love. My world has changed so much for the better by just learning how to deal with issues from a positive perspective. Now I'm working on passing it on to others. So lives change because people listen to this program, read the books, and do what they're supposed to do. And if you can get behind that, please sign up. Join us at Club New Life. And, and Larry, any updates on scholarshiping? Well, scholarships are always available. We, the, the money in and out flows. I don't have a current, because this is a recorded program, I don't have the most current. But we're always looking for scholarship money. We have pledged that we will not, uh, knowingly, we won't allow money to be a reason somebody doesn't come to a workshop. Uh, And I just Mm -hmm. want us to be clear (coughs) on that. Because sometimes we can actually use that as an excuse to avoid confronting our issues. We are removing the excuse, but we still need your help. And uh, I want to encourage people, if you have experienced one of the workshops and have experienced Mm -hmm. a transformation, let's reinvest. Let's keep paying that forward. Let's keep expanding the kingdom impact so we can increase the level of health and vitality in our Mm -hmm. families and our friendships and our churches all across the board. I can go on and on, Mm -hmm. but partner, invest. And like a mustard seed that Jesus talks about in the kingdom, when you attend these workshops or help others, the ripple effect Mm -hmm. affects many, many more lives. Again, I just wonder how many children are growing up in intact homes because their parents attended intimacy and marriage. Well, that ripple effect is outward and it's generationally downward as well. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's the beauty. I just want to say thank you to everybody who has given, who is a Club New Life member. It makes all the difference, and uh, we just are grateful. Well, and Larry, we're grateful for you. Thank you for your work, and thank you for keeping all of this moving forward. And uh, and I just want to remind, we were talking about the um, workshops. We do have, actually, tomorrow in Sacramento, Every Man's Battle. If you're on the fence, get off the fence, make a phone call. If you can't make it, there is September 13th in Houston. Every Man's Battle is every single month. Um, if you are struggling in this area, I really encourage people. There, There is this, it's kind of a cheesy movie. It's called um, We Bought a Zoo. Oh, that's a good movie. <laughs> it's, it's sorry to call it zoo. cheesy. Yeah, yeah no, we it bought is a zoo. Cheesy, yeah, it has Matt Damon in it. Yeah. But there's a line that when Matt Damon is talking to his son who's struggling about telling a girl that he likes in the school, and he talks about having 20 seconds of courage, mm. and it's how he met his wife. He had 20 seconds of courage, and everything changed. Huh. Mm-hmm. And I just want to encourage people that for what we offer – it does. It can be scary yeah, to confront these issues, but all you need is 20 seconds of courage and your life can be changed. Finding Freedom is coming up September 20th in Dallas, 12 Steps to Happier Conference, which I'm really excited and, and excited about the presentations I'm yes. going to make there, um, October 5th. And this is for life recovery, which is recovery mm-hmm. from anything that is holding us back or keeping us stuck. And again, I had mentioned it, intimacy and marriage. It is the best two, two and a half day marriage intensive I've Mm -hmm. seen out there. That's October 25th in Columbus, Ohio. Come check it out. Let us help you get 20 seconds of courage and let your life be changed for the good forever. And think about just buying the zoo of happiness and, and, one, and, and over, <laughs> over in one it, cage yes. is happiness and there's joy over here in this <laughs> other section and then there's the elephant of you know fulfillment yes and just buy that zoo it's buy the zoo Absolutely. i'm on board man this is good stuff <laughs>
Excellent. Where's that too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look me up. It's called the Kingdom of God. Sometimes it, it looks like a zoo. Yeah, so, sometimes yeah. it does. <laughs> so, well, let's go to Jean listening in, on Siri XM in Wilmington, North Carolina. Jean, are you there? Yes, I'm right here. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, I am one of the growing number of grandparents um, raising a grandchild due to mm. my own daughter's um, addiction, sexual addiction, um, opiate, drugs, alcohol. Oh, and so, Kevy Gray, she's my granddaughter. She's now six. So, um, I stepped in when Kevy was two, um, really one and a half. I'd been there from the day she was born, but I really stepped in. Um, Kelly was, my daughter was living in a house that I put her in. Now, granted, I allowed her to stay at home, um, mm. not to work. I wanted her to be there for Kevy. And so I was really financially, mentally, physically, spiritually supporting her. Mm-hmm. She was, she did fine when she lived in my house, but when I put her back in on her own, the old bad behavior surfaced and moved a gentleman in, a guy in. And long story short, he was on the North Carolina Sex Offender Registry, and Kelly knew it. And so that's mm. when I stepped in, took mm. over, and um, Kelly totally disconnected from Kevy from the time she was about a year and a half. And so when I, you know, got the paper signed and Kelly signed them and um, Kelly walked away, the last thing I said to her was, you know, you are no longer my concern, you are my prayer. And so she walked away and that was in 2014. And moving forward, I don't know if she's alive or she's dead. Um, I'm a nurse and so I deal with um, death and dying every day, Monday through Friday. So Mm. I'm 60 years old. I'm raising a six-year-old now. I'm a single person. Um, I work full-time. Um, the gravity, the enormity of this, the undertaking, I feel very blessed in many, many ways. My life, my time management skills are the best they've ever been. You know, I'm an adult attention disorder, so I've got ADD, you know, so... You know, I, I've got the gamut of I'm going, mm-hmm. going, yeah. going. I'm always on. I don't, I do not stop. Yeah. And well, my Jean, world. Gene, what's yeah. the what's the question my, for us? Yeah, because we're coming up against the, the clock here. Is, is that, the question is, is that how do how do you like? I I you know I cannot. I I don't even know. It, it's so many questions rolled into mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Like, Emotionally, spiritually, figly, fi- you know, physically, you know, financially. Try, you know, try, to, make one, try, try to make it oh one. Try to make it one question. God. Just, just think about for a second. One question is, how do you, how do I, how do I just breathe and and emotionally take care of myself? Mm. Ah. Physically, I mean, sure. my eyelashes hurt. At yeah. my, you know, I mean, sure. there's nothing on me. Yeah, because everything is, you know, I'm a much better nana. Is yeah, I'm much better mom as a nana. Yeah, sure. You know, than I was as a 21 year old. But I think there's no. Well, Jean, Jean, I gotta jump in here. I gotta jump in here just for a second because we're coming up against a break. So hang on the line. We'll come back and we're gonna help you out. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Columbus, Ohio, October 25th to the 27th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylon and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. 
Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today, living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. And we're back again in studio, New Life Live. This is Chris Williams sitting in for Steve Arterburn. We have Jean on the line. Jean, you're talking to us about raising your granddaughter and the... And and just feeling overwhelmed. But I want to go back to something really quickly. Your daughter has been in this... Kelly. Kelly has Mm -hmm. been in this horrific situation. What impact has that had on you? Um, You know, guilt as a mother. Mm -hmm. Um, You almost hope that she doesn't come back because you don't want her around. You know, I don't want her around heavy so you go through guilt you know but then yeah. you also go through you have to release and let it go because i have to raise Kevy. so there's a you know there's a gambit of emotions mm. with the fact that i don't know if she's alive or dead you know what i mean so you deal with that but you just have to put that on the back burner you know and yeah. it's, it's just a whole lot and, yeah. and when mm-hmm. the guilt talks to you yeah what does the guilt say the guilt says that you know what, you weren't such a good parent because, mm. you know, you were never there. You were in nursing no. school and they were latchkey mm. kids, you know. So, you know, their father wasn't around. So it was just me raising them. So the yeah. guilt is, you know what, you could have done more. You could have done more. But then you know yourself, you know, you didn't fall prey to the addiction or this and that. You just, you did the best at 21. What do you, you have no business raising children at 21. Wow. But you do. Mm-hmm. And you just keep moving forward. And so at 60... You know, I, I I have come to so much peace with, you know, so many different things right. that, you know, the mistakes you make. So the intrinsic part of me has a lot of peace, and I'm, a, I'm so far on my journey with raising Kevy, you know, but it's just that, you know, there's still that little... That, little on the shoulder you know that yeah, little, the yeah. devil on the shoulder you yeah, know? The, so, yeah. The, well, that guilt voice that just doesn't like to be quiet well right and and uh, that it sounds like creates a lot of pressure for you like that small sure. voice can have a huge yeah. there's a lot at pressure. stake with kevy right because this oh, time to get it yeah. right the guilt says okay that blew apart I'm 60 but I got to do it right with kevy mm-hmm. I got another chance that's tremendous pressure for you well, doesn't God, aren't, aren't, when you become a Christian and saved and, you know, whatever, aren't you held to a high, to a standard, where it's not a standard, but you know better. And so there is that pressure of that, I, I'm responsible for this child, mm-hmm. spiritual, physical, mental, and so I know better this time. At 21, I did. Well, right. I, I, well let, let, me, let me push back a tad in a nice mm-hmm. way with you on that thinking. We are more responsible as we grow, but we're never to be over-responsible. Mm-hmm. See, mm. when we feel that pressure, sometimes they think, oh, my gosh, Kevy picked her nose. Well, maybe she'll be on drugs, or I didn't hold right. her enough, or I didn't read yeah. enough Bible verses. That's over-responsible. It creates anxiety, creates stress. Then, you're, uh, then your eyelids right. start scratching or whatever has happened. It was awful when right. we, we feel that pressure to be over-responsible because – Basically, right. there's got to be some enough grace in your head and in your support system to say, I'm a good mom. And in mm-hmm. 60, I learned some lessons. And one thing that's helped me with my clients over the years so much has been the phrase, and y'all want you to write this down. Here we go. Good enough. Okay. 
all the pediatric mm-hmm. literature about the pediatric right. mother ba- baby bonding don't yeah. be a bad mother your your daughter unfortunately is not a competent mother but the perfect mother right. will kill you i want to be a good enough mother for kevy that means i got i right. take i take breaks I do go away. Mm-hmm. I'm not with her all the time. A six-year-old doesn't need you there 24/7. Shoot for good enough. Get the support. Mm. Okay. And, and Jean, thank you. I when, really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to that guilt voice, um, in Elanon, they talk about the three C's, and, and I really want to make this clear because it is very common when our children go through really, really brutal experiences like addiction that is even life-threatening our natural response Mm -hmm. is to go in and help and even control it and get it to safety and addiction has this other weird thing called powerlessness and and it really is a big threat and so the three three c's are this you did not cause this addiction in your Mm -hmm. daughter okay as a result you cannot control it including like what what may happen with her daughter with your granddaughter you you can't control all of that mm. and you can't cure it that's two of the c's mm-hmm. yeah so you can't you didn't mm-hmm. cause it oh and that's you the other c yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's the three three. <laughs> so, so you didn't cause it you can't control it and you can't cure it but there's a fourth c that you can do and that is you can care for yourself well and so, well, right, okay. and and spinning off of that, uh, Jean, you know, you being a nurse, mm-hmm. um, nurses are usually really good caretakers, but it's important that Not you turn some of that care on yourself because that's also good mm-hmm. modeling for Kevy, right? That you aren't the de- yeah, depleted is. grandma that's just, you know, running with no fuel in her tank and trying to be mm-hmm. a, a mom. Right. Yeah, I, and, I, and you need community. I, I agree with everything everybody's saying. I got to tell you, you have a level of psychological sophistication mm-hmm. as we're listening to like you that's y- you've sort grown. of unusual. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's very nice to hear. I, oh, I, I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you've, you've you read the book. That self reflection in the mirror, read the book. You it's know, so good. Yeah. That's couch. good. But Jean. let me tell you what, listen to what, oh. listen to what Jill said. She goes, you're going to be, you already are a really good mom to Kevin because mm-hmm. you're growing so much. So take some pressure off. Go get a, spa day and <laughs> get some love on a regular basis yeah. and i think you're fine and and yeah get other moms get other around folks. you other families yeah. church community yeah. get people involved yeah yeah blah, blah, blah. yeah yeah get as much support as you can and i think two things it, it just in that direction is like one try to simplify your thoughts i, I find that that mm-hmm. having i'm a golfer i don't know I if go, this will translate don't overthink but, everything yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, yeah. my golf coach tells me, have, don't think about all the things you need in your golf swing. Just you're only allowed one yeah, thought. keep it simple. And so it's, it's called the swing thought. Okay. So, like, again, the one thought maybe today is what John has said, is that it's good enough. God's got this. It's good enough. And and I'm good enough. And I'm good enough. There's yeah. enough of me for Kevy. She's getting enough energy and love for me. She's Her tank's full, and I can go hang out with friends, and I'm good enough. Okay. So, Gene, we're going to send you a copy of Dr. John Townsend's book, People Fuel. You need some energy in your life, and you need three to ten not, people. Not that she'll have time to read it, guys. But we'll <laughs> yeah. see. hey, she's she she's a reader. Yeah. She'll okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gene, sorry, she's a busy <laughs> woman. Um, and late, so late yeah. at night. <laughs> yeah, but but and that's what's great about Gene is that she is on a constant growth. Yes, that's I love true. That. I love that about her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're going to send you people fuel, and John, tell us a couple things that we're going to learn from people fuel, especially in situations where we are overwhelmed yeah. with responsibility. You're going to learn that you have four categories of needs, and you got to figure out which of these qu- called the quadrants. Number one, do I need people just to be present with me, to just shut up and listen? Let me vent. Let me just kind of tell you where things are. Just be present, like Job's friends were in Job chapter two. They didn't speak to him because of his grief. Or do I need people to convey the good? Do I need a shot of emotional prose where somebody says, I believe in you. I know you're discouraged, but I want to encourage you because I see so much good in you. Or do we need somebody to give us reality? Here's some wisdom. I'm going to be your guru. I'm going to tell you some Yoda talks. I'm going to give you a why here. I'm going to help. I'm going to give you insight. Or number four, do I need somebody to call me to action? Do you have some advice for me? Three steps, a structure, a plan, a book to read. If we've got people present with us, 
give, giving us the good, giving us reality, and calling to action. One of those will change our life. Just one. Absolutely. That's great. So again, People Fuel is the book. It's going to really help increase your energy for the life that God has given you. Thank you so much for being with us here today. From us here at New Life, we love you, we bless you, and we ask God's favor on you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.